The MK3 finally arrived after being ordered back in November, and I was super excited. Hey, do you know what this is? No, it's a printer. Yes. 3D printer? Yes. Is it really? Yes, this is so my... So what you going to make out of it? What are we going to make? We're going to make everything. <laughs> I just want to talk to you guys about my initial thoughts for the MK3. I don't really want to go into a deep dive of all the different utilities that it has yet because I haven't fully had the time to test it all out. And honestly, this is something that I really enjoy doing. I want to give you guys quality content and quality feedback on the features that it has. So this is how the build went and also some of the issues that I think you might run into while you're working on it yourselves. Also some tips that I've come up with while I was building it, but I wanna try and do this in one take. I don't wanna script this. This is a non-scripted YouTube channel. I just wanna to talk to you guys, so. Okay, the build went great. The MK3 is way less time to put together than the MK2 was. The Y-axis, like I said in, in my last video, was redone and that saves a ton of time. Instead of having to mess with those threaded rods and measure out all the different nuts, you just put the aluminum extrusions on the frame and screw them in and it saved an insane amount of time. Like, they really listened to their customers. And I know I'm gonna sound like a major fanboy like I did in my previous video, but they did. They listened to what their customers were saying and they improved all the different things that were issues in the MK2S, at least from my standpoint. I do wanna hit on some of the things that I ran into while I was building it and just some tidbits of, you know, don't forget this, don't forget that. The Z, the little Z covers, the ones that you screw onto the threaded rod, those hurt my thumbs like crazy and it was a big pain in the butt. They're difficult to put on, but they do go on. So when I was trying to fit it on the first time, I was thinking like, this is not gonna work, but it actually ended up working. So just make sure that you um, know that those are kind of difficult to put on. In step nine of the E access, there's a part where you have to find the translucent washers inside the bag of screws and that drove me nuts. I should have just poured it out, but I was just, I wasn't thinking of it at the time. But I thought it was funny that somebody thought of the idea to put translucent washers inside of this bag of screws and nuts. And you're just like, where are they? There's a, And there's a part where you're putting on the fan for the extruder, and it actually says on there, don't tighten the parts too much because they're made of plastic and you might break them. And I just thought to myself, all the parts are made of plastic. It's a 3D printed part. Of course they're all made of plastic. And it just made me chuckle, but. Beware when you're tightening these parts that they're made of plastic. Okay, when you're inserting on the x-axis, you have to insert the bearings. Uh, the same ones that go on the y-axis, except you're actually squeezing them into the printed parts. I used a 10 millimeter um, socket. Yeah, let me grab it. This guy. And you just put the, the bearing kind of in the part, and then you can use this to push it down all the way. And there's only one way it can go in, because there's a lip that stops it. So make sure you're putting it in the correct way and read all the directions. That's actually the next one I wrote on there. Make sure you read all the directions. For the Z-axis, I didn't read there's a correct way that each part goes on, like there's a left and a right, and I didn't read that. And so I ended up having to take them off and, and redo them. Uh, just read the directions. I thought, oh, I know what I'm doing, and it turns out I didn't. I would recommend getting a metric screw set instead of using what they give you in the, in the kit. It just makes things a lot easier. You get more torque, you can screw things in faster. So if you have a little extra cash, if you save it buying the kit instead of buying the pre-assembled, I'd recommend going out and getting yourself a metric screw set. A metric screw set. I really enjoyed the improved cable management system. So the previous one was a huge pain in the butt. And I think one of the greatest improvements, at least when assembling, is the cable management system on the back end. So it, it all worked a lot better. It fit a lot better. There's actual channels for the different wires. The braided wrap system that they had in the MK2 was a little difficult for me. And in the MK3, it was flawless. Yeah, so when assembling the LCD screen and you have to put the supports on and then you squeeze the faceplate on, there's a specific distance that those supports have to be. So make sure that 
that distance is there before you try to put the faceplate on. It's just something that I noticed could have been added in. Maybe if I read all the instructions and comments, I would have seen that, but that's just a tip for you guys. The Bond Tech extruder gears that come with the kit, there's two bearings. It's something that I missed because I didn't read the directions, but you actually have to put both of those bearings on the metal rod that you, or that actually holds one of the gears in place. So make sure you do that. I didn't do it and I had to take out that metal rod and put it back on because there's this clicking sound that kept happening. And then I realized like, wait a second, I think I didn't put that on. I thought it was an extra that they gave me in case it broke over time or something, but you need both of them. But yeah, besides that, uh, unless something else comes to mind and I'll let you guys know in a later video, the build went really well. And I think that the kit is amazing. Um, Prusa and his team have done a great job putting this together and the community is fabulous for all the comments that they put on the assembly instructions on the internet because they just give you heads up as you're going along. So just make sure you follow the directions. I know I've said that like 50 times in this video already, but it's a good tip. So after it was finally assembled, I went through the calibration and I messed up when I was installing the Z-axis because I didn't put the hot end all the way to the bed. And so my pin to probe was, it would be, it was way too far down and it wasn't registering correctly. And basically my Z correction that I had to do was over a millimeter and so I had to redo that. So make sure that when you're assembling the Z and they tell you to to push down the pin to probe and put the, the zip tie underneath, that the hot end is actually touching the bed. After I fixed that, it worked really well and the calibration went well. Make sure that you upgrade to the latest firmware because they fixed a lot of the bugs that happened during the initial launch that I didn't experience thanks to the upgraded firmware. Prusa control seems improved and when I was slicing some models that I wanted to print out, it seemed to work a lot faster than the previous edition of Prusa control and it's pretty easy to switch back and forth between the MK2 and the MK3, so I like that as well. But enough with the build, messing with the firm, firmware and software in the beginning, let's talk initial prints. All of the prints that came off of this with, with the SD card, the initial like G-code prints that they ship with the printer were amazing. Like it blew my mind away. It, it just, they all look really clean. They all look really crisp and I love that silver filament too. It just gives a nice shine to everything that you print out. I was really happy with it, but of course those are pre-configured and pre-sliced and they come with the printer, so they're gonna look good no matter what. Of course, I needed to print out a home sliced model. That's what I did. I have a coworker who created a model and he needed me to print it out so that he could put it together and, and test it. So I printed one out on the MK2S and I printed one out on the MK3 and believe it or not, the MK2S printed out faster. And I was racking my mind trying to figure out why because the settings were identical, except I used the Slicer Prusa Edition for the MK2S and I used the Linear Advance and it prints at 100 millimeters a second. It definitely did print faster. It finished, I think, an hour and a half faster than the MK3 did. That being said, I went back in and I printed out two uh, models that were almost identical, not exactly, because I'm making a, um, a camera slider for my camera so I could give you guys those clean shots. I'm also getting a new camera too, but that's gonna be a later video. But <clears throat> I printed out these guys and they're almost the same. They're basically the same size. Some are, have holes and some don't, but you can't really tell which one was printed on which printer unless you were there for it. Yeah, they look so good. I'm, I'm like amazed at how well both of these came out. With Prusa Control and then slicing it for 0.2 layers, the MK3 printed way faster than the MK2 did. And it's interesting to me. If you use Linear Advance, the MK2 is still faster than the MK3. Um, but I do think that the quality of the MK3 may be slightly better. I don't know. I, it's, hard, it's hard to tell because it's just so good on both of them. I will say that without a doubt, the MK3 is a dead silent printer. It is so quiet. There's been multiple times where I'd be printing something and I forgot that it was printing and my wife forgot that it was printing and then I would print something on the MK2 and I think I'm starting to convince her that I need to buy the parts to upgrade it to the MK3. Yes? <laughs> it's just been, it's been a blast printing with this and 
I had a question asked in one of my videos if somebody thought that the TiVo would be a great printer. I believe that the TiVo is a great printer if you're trying to learn. I think the MK3 is a great printer if you're trying to learn how to assemble a printer and then have it work. This thing just works. There's really no tinkering at all needed. And the firmware and the software that comes with it, the slicer that comes with it, it all just works. You don't have to do anything. So if you want a 3D printer that works, get the MK3. It's totally worth the value. For seven, was it 7.99? For 750 bucks, that's an insane value. You're gonna get something that prints at Ultimaker levels, but you pay, what, less than half of the cost of one. Trying to wrap this up, I want to talk about the cool features that the MK3 has in a future video. I'm gonna talk about how um, if it misses steps, it's gonna re, it'll stop, rehome, and then pick up where it left off. And I'll talk about the power, um, power saver feature. Um, I know there's a ton that I didn't hit on this, in this video, but I feel bad because I'm enjoying talking to you guys and showing you guys all this stuff. And I know I don't put out a whole lot of videos, so I'm trying to get better at that. Also, I've been thinking about the channel and the direction I wanna take it. I love 3D printing. I also like technology in different sectors. I, I like cameras, I like computers, I like TV screens, I like lights, I, I like all types of technology. So I'm thinking that in the future, if I buy any new piece of technology, I'm gonna talk about it with you guys as well. And I'd like to know if that's something you'd like to see. I've been filming on a T4i and this thing is ancient. I mean, it's from 2012, it's crazy old. So I'm getting a new camera and hopefully the quality of that will really ramp up and we'll get some sharper, cleaner videos. 4K obviously is what everyone has now. Last but not least, before I leave, I wanna appreciate the people that have been using the affiliate links. It's going to help me create more content for you. All, that, all the proceeds and the kickbacks I get, I'm just gonna to use to help fund this channel because I work full time, this is my hobby, and if you guys are enjoying what I'm putting out, I'm, I'm gonna use that money to give back to you guys. So I appreciate that a lot. That's all I have for you. This has been a blast. And if you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments below. Give me a like, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next video.